everybody, welcome back to the fish room. Lou here, and I just wanted to do a little bit of a vlog. So this is actually gonna be fish room vlog number one. And today what I want to do is sort out this horrendous five foot behind me, uh, which I showed you in the fall yesterday. It's got this huge Bacorti eye cichlid in there. There's a big granulosis catfish in there, and basically, um, actually see the Asian sun catfish and the Jack Dempsey having a little fight in the middle there because basically there's no aquascape, there's no hardscape whatsoever and there's nothing breaking up the lines of sight territories in this tank at all so I just feel like we can do one better for the fish. It's a big old tank in the middle of this room and at the moment it literally just looks like sewage. Um, there's no lights on there, there's basically nothing in it except to filter in a couple of logs and I can do better. So I want you guys to come along with me and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this uh, mess and make this five foot tank much nicer for the fish and for me to look at. done some water changes on these six tanks here and then the, these four tanks here got the lights off on these tanks because these L397s are looking very breedy today um, I said yesterday in my tour video that no one looked like anyone was doing anything but actually that male was trapping when I came in first thing this morning um, I don't think he's on eggs uh, and that male up there I think was trapping earlier as well I definitely think I saw a female come out of his cave. It's at a bit of a dodgy angle, so I can't really see into that one. I know he definitely doesn't have eggs. But I've left the lights off because they're not really a big fan of the lights, and I don't want to distract them any more than I already have just by coming in here this morning. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed for 397 eggs. Got a big old stack of blue hoses because every single tank has its own hose. Um, and if I dip my hands in the tanks, they get sanitized and completely dried in between tanks as well because I take biosecurity really seriously. Right. So I'm back and I've been to the garden center and got a bag of Highland Pebbles for a tenner. Um, and then what we need to do is I'm going to catch a couple of fish out of here and put them in there. Uh, namely, this kissing the Rami and the two Crovia uh, that are in the back there. Uh, Crovia is tiny. I've got two of them in there and I've got two of them in there as well. Um, and then I need to drain this down, um, stick with the pebbles, and then I'm going to take you foraging for some wood um, and some sticks and things just to add some detail. Um, can't be planted with these guys because we're going to tear them up, um, and most of the fake plants I've got are in use at the moment. Might add some fake plants later, but it's not really biotope specific for these. Um, so we're going to make something that's quite natural for a, a Central American cyclic aquascape. Um, so yeah, uh, I better get this draining. So I found some beech wood. What you're looking for when you're foraging for wood is deciduous hardwood trees. So this is some beech here that I found um, in the bonfire pile from some gardening we've been doing. It's a bit of a funny time of year for foraging for wooden things because you can't tell all the time what type of tree it is if they've lost all of their leaves. But because these have still got the leaves on them, I can see that they are beech. While I'm waiting for that to drain, I wanted to talk about this idea of breaking lines of sight in a cichlid tank. Alright, so a lot of people will say this, you need more ornaments, you need more caves, you need to break the line of sight so the fish can't see each other. And if you were looking at these tanks from a top-down perspective, a lot of people either have a couple of sticks going long ways, like that, a bit like what I've already got in that five foot at the moment before we, we redo it, or they've got um, maybe a couple of ornaments here and an ornament there type thing. Now, from a cichlid's perspective, unless it's quite a small cichlid and this log is quite tall, there's only really one major territory here and you might get some fish fighting for this area around here. Um, but 
essentially there isn't much here dividing the territory yes we've got this log going across here so I mean at most you're going to get a territory here and you're going to get a territory here that's only going to be two territories and in terms of cichlids this is going to be sufficient, you know, if you're going to keep two species together and they're very small, very peaceful fish, this is probably uh, going to work fine. But the more fish you add, the bigger attitudes, the more teeth, essentially this is not going to work. And a lot of people have problems with cichlid aggression because they haven't escaped the tank right. With this, if we're still imagining top down, if I took the tank and put a pile of sticks and logs like that and we had maybe some sticks here I'm going to try not to make that look like a certain shape so they can swim over it or under it uh, you can have these however you like but now we've got three territories so I've got one two three territories great all right cool but if I've got fish that really like that middle bit that's still going to be a problem. Look, but three is still better than two. You're going to get a lot less aggression with this kind of setup than you will um, if you've just got a parallel line going right the way across or just a row of ornaments going straight the way down the middle of the tank. Um, you've basically got front or back. Here you've got one, two, three. Now, if I wanted to add more, you can then start thinking about your diagonals. And if I do something like that, all right, or that one probably should have been the other way around. But you get the idea. Obviously, the fish can still access these areas, but now all of a sudden, by doing this zigzag shape, um, it's the same as if you're bridge building. Diagonals, stronger, always stronger. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six territories here. I've come up with. Hopefully in the next video I'll be able to give you an update of what this is looking like once it's clear. A lot of the leaves are floating and I'm expecting the plecos in here to finish a lot of those leaves off overnight. Uh, certainly the self and gibbiceps in here uh, will love munching on those. But already uh, we've got the, you can just see a silhouette, we've got the red tiger motta in the territory in the back corner over there. For reasons unknown to me, the Picorti likes that tiny little space in that corner there that I created more in mind probably for the granulosis catfish, who has decided to take the front and centre territory here. Uh, so you've got a territory in the front, and then behind that branch is another territory. Same here, you've got one in the front, one in the back. Uh, I'd sort of say this one in the front is like a half, because you can see there, but where the Picorti is is definitely a little little patch he likes for sure in that corner. You've got a territory behind that branch in the corner behind the filter um, and then yeah over in this back corner here so one two three four five six five and a half six territories um, and lots of sticks and branches breaking the line of sight and that will also slow down an attacking fish 
uh, Bacortii and a lot of the cichlids are laterally compressed in order to uh, slide in between sticks and things in the wild. The more laterally compressed they are, the more sticky their uh, environment is. So things like discus and angelfish, they're really tall and thin uh, for being able to weave in and out of uh, vertical reeds and branches in the, in the wild. Same with these guys, this is very similar to a sort of habitat that they would find in the wild. Um, a little habitat underneath a fallen tree or something um, on a sandy, pebbly, uh, rocky riverbed. So stay tuned for the next video, drop us a like and a comment, um, I'd love to hear from you. A uh, big thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far, uh, who wants to come on this journey with us. Um, and I will see you in the next video, hopefully with some much clearer water. Bye bye!